All right, guys, how's it going? I'm uh, do a video on the Jeep today. I uh, <clears throat> I've noticed driving this thing. I mean, it's always had coolant disappearing. Well, I say it's always had coolant disappearing. It hasn't always had coolant disappearing, but uh, uh, I've had to add some, you know, over the years. Um, and, uh, uh, especially the last couple of years, just make, you know, make sure keep stuff in it. Well, driving it, you know, letting it sit for as long as it's set, and then now driving it again, driving it a little, over 60 miles a day, back and forth to work, 30 miles to work, 30 miles back to work, all interstate, all interstate, it's not interstate, it's a highway, but same thing, 70 miles an hour even though 70 miles an hour is not its uh, best speed it'd rather go 60 to 65 or 80 plus <laughs> when you get to 70 it's uh it, that's it's that's not its sweet spot it 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 won't stay 70 <laughs> it's uh that's the that's the lowest overdrive the lowest that it's on in overdrive pretty much so you're you're at the low end of overdrive but you're still a little too fast for third gear and uh it's just it just bogs down and and it, it doesn't like keeping that speed especially going up any hill you ought you automatically downshift so uh yeah it doesn't get very good gas mileage it's uh, about the same as my yukon i get they both get between 10 to 10 to 12 miles a gallon uh, the digital display on the inside of my Jeep, it says around 14, 14 and a half. Um, but, you know, when you do the calculations at the gas pump, it's, you know, more like 11, like it was this time. I think the... Anyway, I'm going on a tangent, but um, going 60 miles a day, give or take, 30 miles there, 30 miles back, and whatever I travel, where I go to lunch, and if I take a detour somewhere on the way home, so, uh, but pretty much a steady 60 miles of highway, it, uh, it, 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 it doesn't like that too much, very much. Um, so, uh, but, um, that it doesn't seem to like it too well, but, um, I, uh, I've been noticing the reservoir's been empty, uh, so I, I filled it up the other night, the other day came out here this morning start uh, started up started it up and went back inside did some stuff came back out and I smelled coolant uh, the, a strong smell of coo coolant and I came over here to check the reservoir and it was empty so I filled the sucker all the way up to the top and uh, when I got back home to uh, after work today uh, I noticed it was empty uh, of course it's got stuff in it uh, no it doesn't it had stuff in it because I uh, used a towel when I got home and popped the radiator cap with the towel slowly and it back fed into the uh, reservoir and uh, then I you know let it cool down it's been cooling down for still warm not burn your finger hot unless you keep it on there but it's still still hot but um, I let it cool down. There's nothing in the reservoir anymore, so it must have sucked it back in somehow. Even with, well, I put the cat cap back on, so it probably sucked it back to the cap. But um, uh, it was empty when I got home. So uh, while I was at work, I knew I was I knew I was gonna do this. So I got this from work. Yeah, it's it's O'Reilly's, but the uh, the they don't have at least anymore or maybe they do whatever but uh they didn't have the uh, ac delco ethylene glycol um uh, they get parts from o'reilly's and napa and stuff just like any other shop if for if it's for something that's not gm or if it's for something that they don't have in town and they need it now so uh two things a full three full strength antifreeze i went to o'reilly's after work because they were the only place that i knew they had a no spill funnel and I've been wanting these things for a while. That'll make it easier. I got this from work. Uh, 
cooling system cleaner, BG, BG's the the fuel additives, ethanols, cleaner, MAPS, airflow cleaner, throttle body cleaner, all that, those little services, uh, BG is what our shop uses. And then I got some dye and stuff, after I fill it up, I'm going to put dye in it, drive it for, you know, a couple days, or drive it tomorrow, drive it, you know, drive it Monday, and I'll probably check it when I get home Monday night. Uh, even though I hate these things, because... I had a T-fitting right there when I first got the Jeep. It lasted a couple years, cracked. Luckily, it didn't crack all the way, so it didn't leave me stranded. But uh, if y'all saw the video earlier, or you follow me on social media, uh, Instagram to be specific, um, you noticed the first day I drove this after I got the death, after I got the death wobble fixed, um, it cracked and left me on the side of the interstate. Uh, so even though so uh it cracked once before and i replaced the t-fitting with another t-fitting and then it cracked again so there's just a solid piece there it's not uh, a brass or a steel i, I do want to either replace the whole line or get a metal insert that's not going to crack but even though i hate these things um i wouldn't have to buy this again uh, but I needed another three-quarter adapter and to be honest rather than dig digging through my toolbox and finding all these pieces This is three bucks. So I mean, it's not that much So this is gonna be the flush kit that I'm gonna use same thing I used on the Yukon uh, I used I think a Presto cleaner with the Yukon and it cleaned it pretty darn good this BG stuff is pretty darn amazing I need to get the uh, the uh, throttle body and uh, intake cleaner uh, from work and do it in the Yukon because there's a good I, I don't think I've ever shown a video of the inside of the intake I think I got pictures but uh, the inside of the intake is not pretty it's it's got a good you know shoot it's a good a centimeter at least um, or well eighth inch eighth inch might be too thick but it's got a good bit of carbon buildup I know it's not gonna get all of it out but it could clean some of it out anyway um but yeah I'm gonna fill it up I'm gonna put this in and then I'm gonna fill it up fill the reservoir up with water I'm not gonna use this and uh, I'm going to start uh, flushing the system I gotta put that put that cleaner in, let it run let it get up to temperature let it run through the heater core and then again let it uh, run for another 10 minutes or so after it's to temperature uh, which this doesn't take long to get to temperature and it's about 80 90 degrees out here all right it is <laughs> yeah 90 90 degrees out here so yeah it's not gonna take long for this to warm up at all and uh, then to let it run for another 10 something minute, 10 15 minutes or so I'll let it cool down a little bit or maybe I'll just pop the radiator cap like I did last time um, and then I'll put the T fitting back in there get the hose and uh, yeah see what kind of gunk comes out of it let me get this uh, set up and filled up and I'll be back I used the no-spill funnel with uh, that length on it because my air box. I uh, used the A and, this, and the A, both A's uh, for this radiator. Uh, and then I put this in here first and then it took a gallon and a half of water. It took a full gallon and roughly another roughly another half a gallon or another quarter of a gallon of water so once the uh, thermostat opened up so it was it was really low this is a uh, nice and green it's a very very it's a sea green is what it is it's the color of it but I don't know how well you're gonna hear me um, I had my uh, Ooh, it's hot in here uh, because I have my uh, 
heater on to run it through the heater core. But um, I may have found my leak. I don't know if it's my leak or not. A lot of the times, if your passenger side floorboard is wet, it is a heater core, uh, and it is wet. Um, I took took a towel, which I don't have anymore. So I got down here and smelled it. Where I did it. Oh, I can definitely feel it wet now. I couldn't feel it earlier. Yeah. The thing is though, I'm gonna let it run for a little bit more. It doesn't does it does not smell like antifreeze. It just smells like mildew. Uh, you would expect it to smell like antifreeze and you would also you would expect to smell it through the AC system, and I haven't. I haven't smelt it, nor have I, nor did I smell it when I sniffed the, the carpet. So, it could just be this thing when the AC is on, it leaks, like, you know, a ton of condensation. I'm wondering if some of the condensation is not able to get out and it's back feeding back, back to the back, down the back side of the dash. Um, which can happen also. So it doesn't smell like antifreeze, but it could still be a heater core. If it's a heater core, well, I got a big project ahead of me. A big project ahead of me, trying to pull that dash. And not only pulling that dash, but pulling that dash with all that wiring that I have going through the dash. When I wired stuff on this, I didn't put any mind to ever having to pull the dash. Uh, my Yukon, I kind of planned ahead, but there's a certain point that I kind of didn't care anymore. So there'll be a, a lot of cutting and re-splicing together on uh, wiring that I've added. Good thing though, if I have to pull that, pull the dash on the Jeep, I can do a major overhaul on some of that wire, some of that old wiring that I did. And if I pull the dash, I might as well buy uh, another alarm because that alarm is not going to go back in uh, because. A, it's a hack job, and B, I don't trust all of the connections that are in there, and when pulling it out, it's probably going to rip, and I'm not going to know what good, what's going to go where. Um, so, uh, this might be sitting aside sometime in the future. Probably not near future. I, I really don't want to pull that dash. <laughs> but... Uh, if that is, if that is it, like I said, I'm going to do a die. Um, I am also going to, I've wanted to cut the carpet out of the Jeep for a while and put, uh, like I did on the Yukon and put bed liner and stuff in it. So I'm just going to cut a section out in the front on the passenger side. Um, I still got a floor mat, so I'm just going to cut a, a, a decent section out and then drive it and then once, and then see if the die comes through. Um, when I, you know, when I refill it, because uh, I'm refilling it with the, the dye and the, uh, the, an, the regular antifreeze. I forget how much this takes, but I'm going to put a thing of dye in there, one uh, full thing of full strength, one thing of uh, uh, water, and then maybe a half a thing and a half of water, you know, mix them back and forth. But, um, yeah. Uh, that's just an update for now. It's uh, I could probably cut it off in any moment now. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll uh, just thought I'd update that that the passenger side floorboard was wet. Whether I know if it's a coolant or not, I don't know. And to be honest, the only way you're going to know a hundred percent is if it either smells like antifreeze or if you take the heater core out and look physically. Uh, and it doesn't smell like antifreeze, so it might just be all of the condensation off the evaporator. Which is possible. Because uh, th this thing condensates like crazy when you when the AC's on. It doesn't con condensate near as much as my Yukon. My Yukon condensates like crazy. But the freaking AC performance is crap. The AC performance on my, U on my Jeep is amazing. But anyway... Uh, that was just an update for now. I'll come back when I start uh, doing the flush.
didn't get all that, but steam's hot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just pop the cap, let it go, and then pop the bottom radiator hose. I will do that. I'll do that in a second. Since I'm flushing it, I need to take this out and flush that and flush this line because those are both uh, bad. Uh, excuse me, full of junk. But since I'm popping it like this, this used to be full of crap. Still bubbling. <laughs> yeah, this uh, this used to be full of crap. Uh, used to be sediment and everything else down in it. Um, which is one reason why I got the spill proof funnel, so, just, so yeah, I don't have to sit there and put a little bit in, put a little bit in, because the radiator's right here. And there's a small neck that comes out and comes up, and that's where that is. I might need a radiator, too, because I noticed there's a little leak over on that side. But I think that's just the hose seeping. But, yeah, now uh, it's going to be hot. Put that down. Well, I don't want to drop it. It's going to be hot. But, uh, yeah. Got a uh, nice hot antifreeze all over wiring and everything else. But, uh, now I can, uh, now I can pop, uh, bottom radiator hose on this side. If I can get to it, if it's easy to get to. If not, I'll pull the pet codic over there. I'd rather pull the bottom radiator hose, though. Oh, crap. I don't think I'll be pulling the radiator hose because that's got the stupid um, uh, put that little cap inside there and flush it. That's all I'm going to do. I think I dropped the bottom radiator hose. Um, I'll I'll drop one of the one of the radiator hoses when I go to refill it because I messed up when I first filled the Yukon up. I didn't account for all the water still in the block because I actually did completely drain the radiator. I, I was able to get the bottom radiator hose off of the, off of the Yukon. Uh, this one is a pain in the butt because it has the factory clip on it. That factory little clamp the, has one of these on it. And uh, I don't have the, the tool that you just stick back there, clip it on and pull it back. And I don't feel like messing around this hot engine because... This isn't this engine ain't gonna be cool for another couple of hours. I could pull the uh, petcock over there when I drain it. That'd probably be the easiest thing to do. But then I won't be able to drain the block. Oh, decisions, decisions. Anyway, I'll be back. Um, well, you know, I don't even have to be back. I can do everything right now. This just goes here, force it down in there, and it should kind of lock in depending on your radiator. Um, I'll put it over there. Uh, hmm, I got a cold air in, uh, cold hot air intake. I need to get a uh, snorkel. Um, hmm, decisions, decisions. I'll just put it forward. I don't want to melt the headlights though. That should be fine. Do that. Take this cap off. I will back flush the, um, the heater core. I will definitely back flush the heater core. Um, this should be... Should be this way. Because you want the water going in but not out. Not coming out. This is probably going to bend like it did. Oops. This is probably going to bend. The one that I used on the Yukon had the water hose like this. And it was attached. And by the time I got done, this was like bent at a 45 degree angle. It's probably going to do that. Because it uh, doesn't get cold. Uh, da -da -da -do. Da -do -da -do. Yeah, let me go get the water hose and I'll be back. Alrighty, that's set up. I put a little valve on it. That's set up. Now, just crank it, turn the heater back on, because I 
fill up, uh, put some AC shots in there. that's all trash or if that's just part of it being green I uh, Yukon you could definitely tell there was a whole bunch of black stuff that came out and I'm not, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it on purpose you don't want to go full pressure system only holds about 16 pounds or so. You Still warm water, not uh, cold yet. Temperature's gone down though, all the way, so. And it is not hot anymore. Cut that hole in the floorboard yet? I need to do that. Floorboard in my. Uh... That still smells like antifreeze in my. Uh... Because uh, it is still running through an engine block. A hot engine block. No. And hot radiator. It was definitely clear when it was coming out, and uh, while that was going on, I came in here and cut a section out of the floor, uh, section out of the carpet, like I said I was. Uh, I found out where my ants were uh, staying. I got ants in both my Yukon, my Yukon, and my Jeep due to the due to them sitting for so long. Uh, cause I, cause I mean. At first, I was just bouncing back and forth, and then my Yukon, my Jeep went down, so I was driving my Yukon, and then my Yukon went down, so I was driving Dad's truck because my Jeep was down. So they've both been sitting, you know, a long time. Uh, a lot of the times, in either tall grass or just in the front yard, but still. And ants decided to find their way and make a home in them. They haven't been too too bad, you know. You don't see them all the time, but there was a little a nest down here on one of the. Uh, on this firewall piece right here, the one across the firewall. When I cut this out though, it uh, again, it doesn't smell like antifreeze. It just smells like water. So either my windshield's leaking again, which uh, it was leaking when I first bought the thing almost 10 years ago. It had a brand new window in it, but whoever put the window in did a crappy job. It was leaking down the driver's side A pillar. I finally got the window replaced. 
and uh, didn't have a problem it could be leaking again or to be honest it could be coming in I got a uh, my amp wire coming in over here if it rains really hard it could be traveling down my uh, my four gauge amp wire and coming down in the floorboard and it's been raining the last couple days that's possible uh, or what I was saying the uh, the HVAC unit could be backing up and it could be leaking inside or it could be my heater, heater core but it does not smell like antifreeze you would expect it to smell like antifreeze uh, if, the, if the heater core was leaking and I would expect it to see green down there but I didn't this is the part of carpet I, I took out it's yeah It looks pretty darn clear to me. There's a little mud in it, but it's clear other than other than the mud. It's crystal clear. And again, it does not smell like antifreeze. And there's a freaking ants. Um, I sprayed poison on the inside, and hopefully that got them. At least ones that are sitting right there. But yeah, um, so seems like my heater core might not be leaking. Hopefully. Fingers crossed, because I don't really don't feel like pulling this dash out. But uh, cooling is definitely going somewhere. So I'm hoping it's an easy leak. But uh, yeah, let me drop, get this pet cock. There's the pet cock draining. There's pet cock, and I got it draining. If there wasn't so many wires in the way, it'd be easier. I got a uh, winch wire. And then some bumper light wires, the actual bumper lights. <clears throat> but while that's draining, I'm going to go ahead and back flush the heater core. Let me pause and get that set up. I'll probably actually video doing that, maybe, depending on how messy it gets. But basically, I'm going to take both the uh, heater core clamps off. I'm going to take that clamp off. And I'm going to take it off right here. I'm going to back flush it, so I'm going to flush this side. And then I'm going to flush through this side. Then I'm going to flush through that side again, and then back through this side. Swap it back and forth until it gets clean. So I'll do that. Oh, do I want to drop... I really want to drain the motor. I really want to drain the motor, but... It's, it's also got a lot of water in it, so I'll probably... It's probably already got enough water in it, so I'll probably just be filling it up with full strength. Because uh, i got a engine block that's pretty much full, I would say. And then I fill the whole radiator up with uh, the universal antifreeze. And uh, see where it is from there. So, let me do all that. Alrighty, well I flushed out the heater core and man I wish I could have set the camera up. There was a whole bunch of crap came out of the heater core. It was nasty. Um, I mean, I, I put it on it and it came out clear and all of a sudden a whole bunch of black. Clear, black, clear, black and it was clear and black bouncing back and forth and then a whole, well I say black, it was brown. Then a whole bunch of brown and then some more. My heater core, my heater hasn't been working very good the last couple years. I know why now. I know I've had sediment in the system for years now. I just never flushed it. My heater should work like it used to. When I first got this thing, this heater would freaking, this heater was like an oven. It would run you out. So I should have a good heater again. Um, ooh, I need to move that down. No wonder it was moved down. Actually, I can just move that there. But, yeah, uh, took this off, actually pulled it off, pulled that out, cleaned that out really good. I mean, it's, there's still stuff in there. I didn't brush it, but I did clean it out. Um, there's a the floor again. I cut a little bit more out of the floor. Nothing came through the floor when I flushed the heater core. And I was using the full pressure of the water hose. So, uh, heater core leaking? Fingers crossed, hopefully not. But uh, here's a spill-free funnel. I, I filled it up. Uh, I don't have any anything in the radiator right now. I put the petcock back in it. So now this is basically how you use it. You fill it up, and then you can do this. But you don't only have to, you know. You you use that 
to fill it up uh, when you pull it out whatever's left you, you take that you put it in there and then you can put it back over a uh, antifreeze bottle and seal it but uh, as of right now it's just burping air because I, di I didn't fill up the radiator at all I just wanted to show you how the spill free funnel works and you basically once you get it running you run it and you just keep filling this up and you keep it full you keep this full you let it run till the uh, uh, till it gets up to temp temperature and your thermostat opens and then you just keep wa keep this filled up and keep on waiting for it to burp and once it stops burping and it's full then you cap this off and you just pull it off and you put the rest of this whether if it's mixed you put it in a, a container for the mixed uh, or if it's just concentrate or just water, you put it in the contain back in the containers you want to. So it's designed to where you don't just have to sit here, fill it up, fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. You intentionally overfill it and it burps itself out. It's especially on the German vehicles or vehicles that don't have a radiator cap. This is a lifesaver, almost almost essential to a certain extent to burp out all the air. But I'm going to keep on filling this up, start it up, and get it full, and uh, I need to put that dye in. It's something I don't need to forget. Thought so. So, we'll put the dye in. And, uh, yeah. I'll uh, keep on filling this thing up and let it rip. I'll be back. And there you go. I've had it running for a minute. You can still see the dye kind of mixed in there. The dye, that's the dye. <coughs> even, even without the ultraviolet light, that's bright. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, act, it seems to be running cooler. Uh, yeah, the system's not pressurized, but it's running right below 210. And it's still roughly 80 degrees outside. Yeah, that's my gas mileage, 13 and a half. And that's going to go down or up depending on how fast or hard I drive it. But, um... It's staying right below 210, and it had the heater has not been this hot in a while. Um, yeah, it, it, it's getting to the point where I can't keep my hand uh, in front of it anymore. And that's how I re remember it. When I first got that thing, man, it it, it hot box you. It get, it gets so hot you would have to turn the heater off in the winter even when it was like 20 degrees or 30 degrees or colder whatever it would literally get so hot in there you would have to turn the heater off i was i was running my buddies out because i had the heater on and they're like dang turn it off it's too hot it has not been that hot in years so and There's some drops right there. But that's not antifreeze again. That's water. It's not antifreeze. We'll see what happens. I'll keep the uh, floor mat out of here and see what happens. But uh, it's not wet. Except those two drops right there. So we'll see what happens. But, uh, looks like it. Doesn't look like it's taking anymore. So, uh, yeah. Um,
flush the cooling system. Should have done that years ago. Put a die in there to see if I can find out it, it where a leak is. Or if I just haven't completely refilled it from when those lines busted on the side of the interstate. Who knows? But I don't, I don't think that's all of it. I, I, mm, I still think there's a leak somewhere. We'll see if I can find it. Alrighty, that's probably where I'm going to wrap it up. All I got to do is take that uh, fill bottle off, which is just doing this. Talk to y'all later. Bye.